Welcome back, everybody. We are nearing the end of the day. I feel like I actually have been here most all day. <laughs> it's that uh, it's good to be back, um, bringing you another partner, another resource for the community. Um, if you're just tuning in for whatever reason, we did this all day so that people from different time zones could hop on at the different parts of their day that made sense. Uh, my name is Erica McManus. I am the COO and co-founder here at Instant Teams, and we have put together um, put this event together today. Um, is an is untapped is the theme and have brought all kinds of different partners and resources um, to really focus on the untapped opportunities that sit within you all as professionals um, in the remote work space, but also the partnerships and the resources that we've been able to tap into and build along the way. Um, so today with me, I have Jen Dane with MMAA. Um, Jen, I said right before we hopped on, it's good to see you again. It's been a while since we've connected personally. Um, sounds like you had a very busy and exciting day yesterday for personal and professional reasons, which I think just an overview of actually what you did in D.C. yesterday would be really great um, for everybody to hear about. But please go ahead and just give us a quick introduction and then we'll we'll jump right in. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me here. It's oh, I always love Instant Teams, so I'm always happy to do anything with you all. Um, you know, one of our first partners I, I had whenever I joined as the CEO and executive director. But as you said, my name is Jennifer Dane, and I um, am part of the Modern Military Association of America, which is the nation's largest LGBTQ plus military and veteran nonprofit. So we've been around since 1993 in different iterations, starting out with the Service Legal Defense Network. Um, and that was really at the cusp of the, uh, the policy, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And it was basically formed uh, to make sure that service members were given, well, at least lesbian, gay, and bisexual service members were able to serve openly. Um, and since, so since then, I've, we've been doing a lot of advocacy work. Um, and yesterday, um, we mm -hmm. celebrated 10 years since the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, and just some interesting information about that is that um, although Don't Ask, Don't Tell was a policy that was impacted or implemented in 1993, we know that the first service member that was ever discharged from the military for being gay was during the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. And um, since World War II into the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell in 2011, 114,000 service members uh, were either discharged dishonorably or other than honorable simply for just being um, LGBTQ+. Um, so what that really looks like is, although the policy was repealed, that didn't, didn't mean that they proactively went back and up, upgraded discharge paperwork um, it's almost a one by one basis. Um, yesterday, we did have some good news, though, from the VA that uh, veterans benefits would be restored to those under wow. un, un, under unotherable or other than honorable discharges. Um, so we're still trying to figure out what that really looks like for our population. Um, but that's kind of a little bit about we started at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and made sure that the LGBTQ population was represented at the tomb, because we do know that there was folks that served that never came home. Um, and then we went to the Congressional Cemetery a retirement ceremony. Uh, I proposed to my partner, uh, and then we ended Woo! at, <laughs> thank you. And then we ended at Freddy's, at Freddy's uh, Bar and Restaurant, which is iconic, uh, a gay, gay bar in DC area. Um, just celebrating with so many folks. Um, it was just a really special time. And also celebrating the one year almost full year of inclusion of transgender service members. Um, there's still a lot of work ahead, especially for folks that are intersex and uh, folks that are non-binary and people living with HIV. But, you know, I think we're slowly getting there. Uh, and no wonder you said that you were feeling a little exhausted. You had a very busy personal and professional day yesterday. So thank you for yes. the little bit of energy to be here with us today. I really, it means a lot. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I, when I first heard about, um, you know, all the appeals that had to happen, you know, working with you all and hearing that from you all was honestly the first time that I had awareness of that. And it was one of those things, it's kind of like a gut punch. You're like, how, you know, how did I not know this? How did I not know that this many people were sitting dishonorably discharged, um, you know, for that reason? And so I think the, what people may not know is the advocacy work that you do is it's a lot, it's a heavy lift. Like you said, it's like almost one by one by one. Um, give us a little insight into some of the work. Like, do you have, you know, legal volunteers that assist you? Like, what are, what are some of the ways that people are interested in supporting um, kind of is that untapped way to give back? What, what does that kind of look like? 
yeah, we have a, we are always looking for legal volunteers because that's our biggest load um, of volunteer work that we have um, because it does take um, anywhere from five to $10,000 to upgrade a discharge or even get a name change if, if a, a person is trans and or non-binary and they want to change their name and it takes very, it takes a minimum of about two years to do those, that process. Wow. Um, so that's a big, that's one of the biggest lifts. And we have a program called Restore Honor and Restore Dignity. Um, and that's our program that we offer free legal assistance for folks who need that. Um, and so we're always looking for that. Um, we're really looking for anyone that wants to come and join us. Um, you don't have to be LGBTQ. I mean, sometimes allyship and being just a voice for us is sometimes the best way, um, best way to advocate and support. Um, I also say, like, you know, it's our organization. And one of the biggest things is monetary. You can always donate monetarily. Um, but things you can do personally, because I always want to leave that too, with things that, you know, you think about, because some people don't think about it is, is I, I call it um, like wallet advocacy or, or voting with your money. And that's, you know, going to places and going and putting your money where, you know, policies are actually being implemented. So there's this restaurant that I really love that's got amazing chicken and waffle fries and lemonade. It is the best place. But they also don't support, you know, inclusive policies for LGBTQ folks. And that's like inclusive policies for me. And so as much as I love their chicken, you know, I vote with my my wallet every time. And it may not it may not chip away that much, but for at a personal level, it does for me. And it makes, you know, it makes it and if there's people that will, you know, come and stand up that way, um, it makes it a lot easier for the cause. But but overall, all for our organization, we're always looking for volunteers to, to support us in whatever ways. I have a laundry list of things that we do <laughs> from education, training, support, um, even going up to the Hill and meeting with your representative to just say, hey, you know, can you support, you know, the LGBTQ military and veteran population? And if it's not LGBTQ, I, I want people to be empowered to stand up and just voice their opinion for what they need, whoever you are. It, it doesn't have to be our community, but if there's an issue that's near and dear to your heart, um, I'll tell you a really quick funny story is mm -hmm. I was, the last time I was at the Hill, I was meeting with some representatives about some legislation and I uh, met um, from Tiger King. What is her name? Mm -hmm. um, the woman from Tiger King. Oh, and she uh, was- Carol Baskin. Carol, I met yeah. Carol Baskins at the Hill. I uh, guess she was advocating oh, for uh, the big cat bill. So I think if, you know, if she can get a meeting with a representative, <laughs> I think we all can. And um, so it's just really a, a important to make your voice heard, whatever, you know, even like the local level, your HOA, you know, mine just banned pride flags from being flown. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I want to get on the HOA board <laughs> to yep. make a change. So um, organizationally, there's a lot you can do, but, you know, if that's too large of an ask, I mean, just look at your, you know, have it re reflected in, in what you do and, and from a corporate manner, obviously be inclusive. And that's, you know, I know that whenever we sat down and first created a partnership with one another, that was one of the things we talked about and made sure that, you know, that we were both on the same page about what that looked like. Yep. Yeah. And there's um, one of the ways that I have learned the most, you know, in our, you know, attempts to allyship be allies and to build the allyship and to build inclusivity at instant teams. Um, I think the first thing I did was enroll in your rainbow shield training. And again, it's a training, you had slide decks, I learned a lot of things, um, but it was meeting the people who had the stories and the people who came to that training to share their stories that again, like left me changed, like teary eyed, like to hear the things that people have gone through that is so much deeper than like showing up for a training and seeing a series of slides, right? Like it's really, really personally impactful to me um, and something that I know we'll be trying to get into our new, um, some of our new training um, is like easy access through Instant Teams in 2022. But um, tell us a little bit about the Rainbow Shield training because it's one of my favorite things that you all do that I think people can engage in individually, corporations can engage with it. Um, I don't know if you have a training cycle going right now, or if it's kind of a la carte, but um, it's it's just a really great opportunity to learn and learn how to stand and to be an ally. Yeah, absolutely. So our Rainbow Shield is also one of my 
favorite things. Because <laughs> I before I was the executive director, I was the education director. Um, so an education is near and dear to my heart. But basically, it's a cultural competency training that basically walks you through, you know, the history of the service, the history of our organization, um, some a lot of the stories because there are a lot of untold stories, and it covers LGBTQ service. What does it mean to to also act with trauma informed care, especially for folks that uh, are serving in like the FAVA or other adjacent organizations or veteran service organizations. Um, and then it goes over just an in-depth of pro like pronouns and terminology. And um, I think even since you've taken it, we have updated it significantly because new things have come out. Yeah. Um, even like the term pansexual, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I don't even, that I didn't know that I have to learn because there's a lot of, there's a vernacular that comes sometimes with um, with that. And so there's a lot of changes that are always happening and change, especially during a presidential administration change. We saw a lot of laws and policies changed and trying to figure out how to, t how to best tell folks how to do that. So it's a yeah. three, three part series. Um, and we just actually finished training the Rosalind Carter or the Rosalind Carter Institute of Caregivers, the care coaches. Um, yeah. And we're gonna, going to be launching um, even more um, robust training modules just to make sure that we're hitting every um, like every sector that needs to be and how to yeah. do that. And also for like HR professionals, what does it mean? How do we put inclusive policies and in our um, work manuals or how to be, you know, just how to be better as humans, but we meet people where they are. Um, and although we don't have a training cycle right now, we will be launching one. And also I, I say this all the time, but hopefully it'll be um, a, 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 at your, um, like at your own pace uh, work, uh, training course right. in okay. the future i hope <laughs> i have been saying that for like a year but maybe i'll get it done soon um but hopefully that'll be the next iteration great well yeah we'll, we'll have to sidebar on that because we're working on some training and module stuff so i'm sure there's a way we can make that all work and i have to say i felt you know i felt safe to bring what i didn't know to that training like it was such a place to be like i don't know the right thing to say all the time i don't know the right words to use like i'm here to learn and that that was the intent of it. And I really, I think that is so powerful um, to be able to come somewhere and say, I don't really know the right thing to do, but I'm here to be taught and to be trained and to then take that and, you know, replicate that out. So, um, yeah. like with saying, with that saying that, or with you saying that, like, we want to make sure that there is a, like a safe and vulnerable space to be at. We want you to come to us to ask us those hard questions that you don't want to ask anyone else um, because, you know, well, and we'll tell you that, you know, not, we're not always going to get it right either. Um, but, you know, just be open and honest and vulnerable and, you know, and have questions because that's really, uh, that's really, we just want to be seen and heard. And, and that's the most meaningful thing you can do. Yep. Well, you mentioned you guys have a lot of different programming. And so, you know, it's part of the, the untapped resource community. What are some of the other ways, you know, any LGBTQ plus families or remote professionals or anyone at Insta Teams or at other companies um, from the military community, what are the ways that they can engage and get support? Um, I saw recently um, like your dependent or your kid program. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of those other ways that people, you know, the things that are untapped, the things that people may not know that you yeah, offer? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a, like you said, it's called Mill Pride and it's a, it's a, like a subgroup that we support military families. And if they have children that identify as LGBTQ, or their military families that are LGBTQ and have kids, um, however they are. Uh, they could be LGBTQ, they could be not. Um, but we just support military families of any sort, um, especially one of the biggest things for me that I'm really passionate about is especially, uh, it's called the Exceptional Family Member Program, the EFMP, and making sure that they're taken care of um, on bases, if they have to move to installations or, or different bases. Um, or afterwards, what does that mean for children that have special needs, whether it's, you know, medical or educational? Uh, so we do a lot of advocacy on that and education. And we also have a big reach so we can make those ask in bigger ways. We have um, over, I think, 85 chapters now worldwide. Um, we have one pr primarily like in every state as well. So if folks want to get connected, our groups are all on Facebook. So you'll type MMAA in the state that you're in. Um, so say I'm in Maryland, so MMAA Maryland, but I think the closest one 
is DC area. Uh, so it, it'll be the national capital region. Um, but there's other or, there's, there's other chapters in every every place. So that's another resource. And if you're an ally and want to come and you know and meet, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, um, all uh, LGBTQ military in a Twitter. Um, we are going to be doing more community chats too um, with different partner organizations to make sure that you know that we're not siloed because that's one thing that um, that I think that some of us do is get siloed in ourselves. But like reaching out to you all to say like what what can you bring to our community as well and not just what we can bring to your communities. Um, and then we have, like I told you, the restore on the restore dignity, which is upgrading discharges. That's our legal support. Um, and so those are some of the main ones we have right now. We will be launching or hopefully in the near future, pending the pandemic, um, a leadership course that will be offered for free um, in every time right before our gala which will hopefully be next year about this time that was on my list to ask or is the gala back on this year yet or not <laughs> no it wasn't so we ended up moving uh celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the repeal of don't ask don't tell yesterday um so we decided because of all the restrictions to not make it to make it virtual which you know it's good and bad because i like to see people in person but yep. it's also the safest um and we, but it was really neat that we got to bring together some really incredible voices. So we're actually live streaming it tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern on our, um, it'll Great. be YouTube, but on our Facebook page. But, but yeah, so those are, um, and then we're also um, another thing. If you are a, a CEO or an executive or in the C-suite, we're also launching an executive women's leader wellness retreat. Um, in the near future. So oh, for folks that are working in this spaces like these that are on the C-suite level, um, we're trying to engage them in ways and just have conversations and just be vulnerable and get together because um, especially women in this space, it's kind of difficult at times. And I, I'm sure you know that, especially in the, the space that you're, we work in. Yeah. So those are a lot of new initiatives that we're coming up with because because um, they're really needed and they have a Oh, before I forget to mention though, too, I forgot to say this. So we are also getting into the caregiving space. Okay. And what is that? So for the first time ever, we're actually partnering with the Rawls and Carter Foundation or Institute for Caregiving. And um, we're in the process of talking to the Elizabeth Dole Foundation to make sure that we're under better understanding the LGBTQ um, caregiving mm -hmm. space. And so we're also working with the University of Alabama to create some quality research on that. Um, and really digging into knowing exactly what's going on um, in that space. Because uh, we know that we're probably already caregiving, we already have, and we just need yep. to figure out how the resources are, are best equipped. Yep. I'm tired just from hearing you just talk about all of that. Like your work, your work and your advocacy and how it just continues to build is just is just phenomenal. So honored to be a part of it. And I know we can support in more ways. So looking forward to that. Um, the, we did have one question about the spouse scholarships and and what was that was connected to specifically um, for the LGBTQ plus families, as well as like what that money was supposed to be, what it is going towards. Was it employment, education? Um, we had some people interested in that. Yeah. So um, right now it's going toward education. But um, as a person that has a degree in education policy, I think that, you know, it also should be, you know, accessible to other options that are just not universities and, and colleges because i think that's at the at the cusp of uh, i think education is education um so so far we've only had scholarships that are geared toward um military spouses that are going to school and pursuing specific degrees but i'm um, looking into 2022 which is crazy to say um <laughs> we will be uh offering uh several more opportunities for uh, military spouses and specifically opportunities for folks who were discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell who never got the benefits. So we're partnering with, uh, um, we are gonna partner with a, a college that's gonna offer free uh, college tuition for folks who serve under Don't Ask, Don't Tell and were discharged. Wow. Well, be sure that we get all this information so we can help share it out. And that is a part of, you know, having you on with, you know, hopefully a, a group of people. We've had anywhere from like, 50 or 55 to 100 people off and on all day today. So hopefully new opportunities for people to either realize that there's an organization out there to support them specifically as an individual or as a family, 
Um, and also for the opportunity just for people to continue, like you said, support, share, bring more resources, bring more partnerships. Um, as we wrap up, anything else, any last words or recommendations or anything that, you know, in, in kind of this untapped realm that you would leave with us? I guess, I mean, if you are looking also for, because um, we do a lot of LGBTQ, obviously military and veterans, but if you're looking for anything that goes beyond that, especially for our transgender community, there's a wonderful organization that's called Sparta that does a really great job with uh, looking at transgender issues in the military um, because it's because we know that um, Don't Ask, Don't Tell didn't cover those folks mm -hmm. and that they uh, and that they still have to fight every day to just serve their country, even though they're capable and qualified. And so if you ever have any, I mean, obviously contact us too, um, and we can get you connected. But at the end of the day, if you want anybody that's smart on that topic, um, I would definitely recommend Sparta. They are a wealth of knowledge on that uh, as well. But, um, but I will, uh, but there's, I'm just really happy about the progress we've made. And I'm really happy with Instant Teams. You all have been there from the beginning, with me at least. Um, and it's nice to see that uh, the progress, you, you know, we're still connected and we're still, we're yeah. still moving along together. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I know you had little energy left after yesterday. Congratulations <laughs> again on that big day being also a thank proposal. You. Super excited for you. Um, and yep, we're here. Thank you so much. Um, we've dropped a lot of links and things in the comments so people can go back through and follow up. And this will also be on replay. So we'll get you links. And if you want to share anything out, Jen, you can um, once the event has wrapped up for the night. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We're going to go back to some breakout sessions. The recruitment team will be on. And our final session tonight um, will be in Spanish with EMHUSA. So thank you all again. Thank you, Jen. Okay. <laughs>